Hello and welcome to episode 94 of the Boot Nerds Podcast. Jay Mike, what's going on? Caught uh, you off guard there. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm pretty good. I'm making weird faces over here, but uh, things are good in Denmark, my friend. How is Canada? It's good. You know what? We're kind of, winter hasn't really come yet, so it's great. We've had like one, one snow second. and then it melted after a day, so it's it's good. Look, man, you have winter all year round. It's like you get a little bit of sun here, then you get winter here, and like you're just, it's always <laughs> winter with you guys. <laughs> a, I can't wait for it to be over. <laughs> 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 I, I would I would say uh, move to Denmark, but weather isn't exactly awesome here. So yeah, just I, I would stay. <laughs> it's pretty good. What's also pretty good, Josh, is that uh, today we are talking about yet another pretty awesome re-release from Adidas. Well, I say re-release. It's it's technically a modern remake uh, because, as you probably all know by now, they have dropped this. So this is the uh, remake of the Predator Absolute. That uh, that kind of made headlines in 2006. Uh, some of the boots for the right reasons, some of them for the wrong reasons. We're going to get into that, but uh, but but it's a pretty pretty solid remake. It's more or less all white because it's uh, it's a part of a pack called Eternal Class. There's also a copa I'm going to show you in just a bit. But uh, you know, first first thoughts on on these. Um, very excited. This is probably to me, the most overlooked predator in predator history, I would say. I know, yeah. I know. And this was way. like this for me was like when I was a teenager, the predator model. Like everybody had these things. Like I I swear at one point in time, like 90% of my team was wearing predator absolutes, and out of all the predator models over the years, that's the one that I spent the most amount of time in. So, okay, so, very so this is like your childhood predator. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm pretty excited about these and the colorway they went with. Uh, while it's not an OG colorway, it's it's extremely good looking. And the Absolute already had some great colorways. So the fact that they were able to create one with just simple white and black, a little bit of a gold detail. I love the way that they look. See, see, this is this is a thing I was I was going to ask you this later, uh, but, but might as well do it now. I'm a little bit like for remakes, well, most of the remakes, apart from the, the, the gold sedan accelerators, uh, they've all been of like real colorways, OG colorways that they've then redone. Uh, but, but this is the first time it with, with like a, a non-player specific uh, remake, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think this is the first time for Maddie we're seeing uh, a, a like unique remake colorway that, uh, that kind of looks like the OG, but still, you know, adds something that we've never seen before to the mix. What, what, what are your thoughts on this? How do, how do you feel about it? Uh, look, th there's lots of great colorways they could have pulled from. Oh, I, yes. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't know. Like, cause I think a lot of the remakes we've seen from the Addy brand have been of OG colorways, uh, especially for like the first variation of it. But at the same time, I... I'm not mad at this. I mean, I, I, I guess I, maybe I should be a little bit like I would have loved to have gotten the, just the OG classic black, red and white predator colorway. That's the colorway that I had that as a kid, be. but it's like, they've done that so many times. And are people really going to be that excited about it anymore? Cause oh, the yes. two colorways that I had as a kid were the, the OG launch color. And then later on, I ended up getting a second pair cause I liked them so much. I had the, remember the colorway was fully blacked out except for the tongue with the fold over tongue was red. Oh yeah, that was a good looking Those pair. were sick as well. So I had those two colorways growing up, but I have right here, you have the the launch colorway, which was the white and gold, which looks, that's a really good colorway as well. But I have the gold and black ones right here, which I'm a big fan of gold football boots. And I think that this is probably one of the best gold preds of all time. But I was also thinking, remember the gold and white absolutes that Zidane wore towards yeah. the end of his career? Oh yeah. That would be a cool, I hope we get that one day. I think we all remember those. And uh, those were also the ones that he wore in the World Cup final uh, when he when he did that Panenka. Ice cold, um, hit the, you know, just chipped it on the, on the crossbar and in, um, just, just barely. I mean, he must have, he must have been shit himself, <laughs> pardon my was... French. Uh, you know, in the moment where, you know, you can just see the ball going towards the the, the, the crossbar and he must be thinking, oh no, merde, and all, all the stuff you say in, uh, in French, right? Oh no, oh no. And then it, it, it goes in. Obviously he then kind of 
you know, things things went downhill from there. Yeah. And, and we we had the Materazzi moment and, you know, tainted his legacy and all that stuff. A little bit of a shame. That's how it goes. Uh, but it would be fun to see those. On the other hand, I think they're so special that I don't think Adidas are going to do like those because they, they are, you know, they're some of the mythical boots out there. And I think they would be tainting like the, the the legend around those boots by releasing them to the public, although people would lose their minds. Oh, absolutely. I I remember that goal, that penalty, so vividly from my childhood. I feel like every kid the next day or even that afternoon just went out and just started practicing those. I remember actually going to practice and we the next day and we were practicing penalties and I did that and my coach was so upset with me because I was actually the penalty taker and he thought that I was going to have the audacity to try that in a match and completely lose the game for us. So, but man, that was just one of the sickest penalties of all time. Couldn't have cut it any closer. Imagine that in the days of VAR. Crazy. Oh, yes. Well, oh. it was It was clear. I just. I actually just rewatched it today and it was clearly in, but I was just, I, I got sweaty hands just looking at it myself <laughs> yeah. thinking, oh man, he must have been so nervous, right? Uh, I think there's one, well, there's a couple of Panenka penalties that have been better. Obviously, the Panenka uh, by Mr. Panenka, who, who, who actually named that type of penalty. And then also pillows against England which is just like the ultimate execution of the Panenka. It was a little bit more smooth, a little bit more nonchalant, if you know what uh, I mean. Pi um, Pirlo's just got, nobody looks like Pirlo when they hit a ball. Oh, like no. he's just, so it's easy. just, I don't get it. Like, I, I, he's now the coach at Juve. Like imagine he's your coach and he just like passes you the ball in training. Uh, like that's, what a weird world we live in, man. Crazy. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But but if we go back to the boots here, I think ju just as you would expect these days from Adidas, there was a time when when we got an Adidas remake and we would all be like, ah, yeah, but you know, it would be cooler if you just gave us the OG upper on a new tooling. Because that that's really what we want. And uh they've they've listened, to be fair. So what we get here is an OG upper. Um the guys who work this project clearly care a lot about about Preds and about bringing back like the OG vibe. And, and, and it seems to me that they are some, some fantastic boot nerds as well. So thank you guys for, for doing that. Because this, this is very, very close to, you know, when I'm sat here with the boots in my hand, obviously you can tell that the white and gold is a little bit older. It has some patina because it, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's got some years on the back. But, but if they were both new, I would genuinely have a, a problem telling them apart just looking at the upper. Uh, when we, I just showed them to you before we started rolling, you even noticed that that it has like the oval shaped uh, lace loop on the, like the top lace loop as as the original did. Like that's mm -hmm. just, I, I didn't even notice. It's just a cool little detail that that some people would just overlook, right? Yeah, yeah, no, they, they you can see that they went through a lot of trouble to incorporate a lot of, if you look at the construction of modern day football boots, we see a lot of one piece uppers. And a lot of that has to do with just changes in design philosophy, but also kind of cost cutting measures to a certain extent, right? Because this is ultimately, these exist for the sake of business. Limited releases are more of hype things than anything else. But if you look at the construction of a Predator Absolute, there's a lot of extra pieces that have to be stitched together so to the other pieces, pieces to make everything work, right? So you don't see that a lot on modern football boots. And I really appreciate that they maintained all of the little segmentations that they probably could have bypassed with all of the modern tech that we have in terms of building a football boot, but they chose not to do that. It's, it's super true to the original, which... Uh, to me, like Adidas at this point in time, like I don't care what your opinion is on the Nike versus Adidas thing. They have established themselves as the king of the remake. It's There's no question about it. No, ab absolutely not. And just, just sitting here looking at the uppers, uh, you know, obviously we have these little liquid rubber strikes, uh, stripes they're called, not strike. Um, uh, liquid rubber stripes on the, uh, on the top of the foot. Adidas back then called it the power zone. I have no idea why is this where you shoot the ball? I don't, I mean, <laughs> but they were there to give you a little bit more grip on the ball. It's, it's just a nice little uh, uh, tacky feeling on the ball as well. Uh, and these are the only ones that don't feel exactly one-to-one, -one, but they're they're nice and tacky enough. The, the SL rubber fins are like, 
they feel exactly the same. The little um, the little textile mesh underneath the rubber fins look completely similar. So, so very, very nice. Uh, just the whole execution, all the stitches, it's, it's very, very good. And even like, even the heel counter uh, is, is, is very, very similar. So it gives the, the boot the same shape, the same silhouette as it did back then. Because uh, the geniuses that they were, they actually designed the Predator Mutator uh, 20 tooling based on on the heel counter of the OG uh, absolute so so it just it just fits so well you know we get the whole uh split split tooling look again because now they could maybe this is actually the reason they've waited so long to bring back the absolutes because they didn't have the tooling to properly do it obviously we don't have the power pulse that's a little bit of a shame because it was it was a fun thing to have but does it matter no i don't think it matters yeah did you wear the power pulse back in the day did you have a pair of um, absolutes i i i did uh, at first, because I thought it it made my shots more powerful, but I've at the end I just felt it. You know, it didn't really matter. Yeah, because for those that don't know, OG Absolutes came with a, a power pulse insole. So I'll pull it out of mine really quickly. So basically, yeah. what it is is a regular insole, but there's like a, a I don't even know what this is made out of. Some kind of heavy material. It's a bar that's glued right to the bottom in the forefoot, and you can see it kind of sticks out. So there's a little uh -huh. slot for it to fit at the bottom of the sole plate in the forefoot. And this added weight was supposed to basically act as like a pendulum and give you a little bit of extra weight in the swing of your foot to hopefully generate more transfer. I'm sure there's some specific statistic that they were giving at the time. 2.5% increased power or something like that. Probably, yeah. I don't something remember, weird. to be honest. Yeah, but, but they did also include a regular insole that's because you couldn't wear a regular one. The slot was still there. So you had to have this little bump to fill in that space. And they included a hollow plastic one that basically weighed nothing just so you could wear them in a lighter form. That's personally how I wore them growing up. The same. And I ended up doing the same thing for the power swerve where they had the tungsten powder in as well. That was like the next level uh, power pulse that they actually introduced on the pulses. So it was just a, basically a carryover on on the absolutes, uh, same technology. Uh, I thought the whole tungsten powder in the power swerve was, that was kind of funny. That was even more gimmicky than this one. But uh, yeah, I, I, I never really wore it uh, in the end because it just... It was a nice idea and it, it probably worked in a lab and theoretically, but it just never really appealed to uh, to me. Yeah, but just cool. This is the problem with modern day football boots is we don't have any of these weird things because it's such an extreme design element that you could say, oh, it's gimmicky. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I see how that could actually make a difference though. Where now we have like people get excited about ACC. It's It's invisible. We literally don't even know if it's there, if they put the logo on there, but people are excited about that. I, yeah, I, it, I miss it, the it days of football there, but boots having weird things on them and just, hey, give it a try, consumers, and see what you think about it. Right. Uh, two things. ACC uh, might be invisible and it might not be there, but we clearly have stated that it works. <clears throat> <laughs> um, no, second thing is that... To be fair to to what you just said, I reckon that if they if they release something like the power poles today, you and I would be you know going at it hard. Um, so I know I know what you're saying, and it kind of feels like it feels like a little bit of a shame that the brands have stopped experimenting in the same way as they did back then. Uh, but we would probably be tearing it a new one if they came out with something <laughs> like this today, uh, it's true. showing us. Yeah, for <laughs> so, sure. It's so true. I, I, I know what you're saying. Um, am I, I they, they, there's no way they could have incorporated it on. No. The, it, it, it makes sense, but it's just nice. You get the full package here. You know, the leather's there. It's, it's, it's as lovely as it was back then. Um, the synthetic, what, what do you call this? Bottom of the, of the boot is there. It, it just feels like, it, it, it looks and feels like an absolute shit. Personally, I'll be honest, I'll hold my hands up here. This is probably my least favorite of like the old Preds um, sitting just above the pulses. I didn't care that much for the pulses. Uh, these were nice. I like them, but they aren't, you know, that high up my list. Okay, that's fair. It's, it's funny how I have the exact opposite taste in Predators to you. Because I think for me, and maybe it's just the I think boots that I saw when I, I saw them age, when I was a kid. Yeah. But like pre. The David Beckham Silver Dragon Predator Pulse, to me, that's still one of the best looking football boots ever made. Uh, I, this one? I 
love the way that those look. And the Predator Absolute, again, just because I was a teenager when it was a current model and it was such a big deal, Zidane was one of my personal favorite players. And I don't know, I just, I, I love both the Pulse and the Absolute. They're some of the most overlooked boots in the Predator line. So while you have them at the bottom of your Predator tier list, I have them uh-huh. near the top. We should do that. We should do an Adidas Predator all-time tier list. That's pretty interesting. Do you think we can agree? No, we definitely, we, can. We, it we can definitely agree on like be the, a negotiation. Yeah, probably. I, I mean, I'm, I'm okay. Let me put it like this. What would I wear if, if I had like an OG accelerator precision mania? Um, and, and I had the pulse and the, uh, and the absolutes as well. I, I'd probably go for the pulse or the, probably the absolutes, right? Would you consider the power swerves an OG pred? Like an, oh. uh, yeah, I think so. Cause it's still, okay, then to me, it's still like the original recipe. You know, not to bring a, not to put a KFC reference in there, but it's a, <laughs> it's definitely original recipe predator. It's the, it's the last of the original preds, right? Yeah, yeah. Then they screwed everything up with the X and like never looked back. But that, but that's a completely <laughs> different story, right? Um, okay, so that is uh, that is the predator absolute. I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty psyched about these. The only thing that's not so exciting is that they are only making these uh, down to UK seven, which means that my baby foot is not able to uh, to wear these. So uh, yeah, you who thank you Adidas. Mm, that's a bit of a shame. That's, I just that's I the- love the fact that. This is one of those boots, similar to a lot of the Predator remakes, where you can break these out in like a men's league type environment and you're going to fool people into thinking that those are OGs. Oh, definitely. Which is so cool. I love that. But, okay, so what's next after this? Like, it has to be Power Swords, right? Yeah. Obviously, I, I, they haven't done the There's no excuse either, but- at this point, but I also would like Pulse. Like, what? Like we're, we can't just overlook Pulse. I, and Pulse had some great colorways as well. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that to me, is something I would like to see. Because that's but the one boot I never Pulse had as a kid. And Power Swerf? Really? I would rather Pulse than over oh, Power Swerf, personally. Because by, by the time Power Swerf came around, I had shifted into the T90 series, and I just wasn't as into it anymore. So for me... Pulse over power swerve 100%. That's just, yeah, okay. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's up to you. Unreasonable. To uh, they also made this. So uh, this is a, uh, I don't know if you can see Josh. This oh, is wow. basically a, like a, a pearl white Copa Mundial on a Copa 19 slash 20, because they're the same uh, tooling. And I'll be honest, this is actually better than I thought it would be. Um, not too bad. It's it's relatively light because of the tooling, and you know, with with the soft upper here, it's it's not up. It's not a bad boot. It it's definitely the best rendition I have personally ever put my feet in of the Copa Mundial, apart from the seventy year thing that was like a knit on top of leather. Okay, yeah, but those are kind of a little bit. On the weird side, yeah, they're, they're not really Copa Mundials, right? They're like a, a yeah. special edition. So yeah, uh, those, these are really cool. I think it's it's a very oddball football boot in terms of maybe. first, it's a white out Copa, which we really haven't seen much. They did it one time years ago, but then Was it's that also white out. They did a white out and a blackout. Am I wrong? For sure, they I don't did think a blackout. You're wrong. No, I, you might be right. Yeah, I, I only remembered like the Samba Pack uh, Copas where they made the the white and blacks as well. Yeah. I can't remember if the black, because it was a white out and a black out released at the same time. I can't remember if it was before right. or after you're Samba right. Pack. Yeah, no, you're right. Because I definitely have a pair somewhere. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, it's it's cool to see them on all white. I think that looks great. I think the tooling actually works surprisingly, even though it's not my favorite tooling in the world. Um, and it's got a modified tongue on a Copa from Adidas. Crazy. That's I never thought I'd see the day. That's like the... I have a video off on my channel that I made such a long time ago where I modified a pair of Copas to have the short tongue. I think I did it on a pair of, I don't know if I did it on Copas or if I did it on Mundial teams, doesn't matter. And every once in a while, like maybe every six months, there's a comment just berating me about modifying the tongue on a pair of Copas. For the most part, I think people appreciated the video, but uh, I don't know. I I I like the short look, short tongue look on a Copa, to be honest. I, I agree. I agree. And and you can if you want to pull it down, you can just uh, take out the laces from the top lace holes and and you know pull it down. Again, I w- I just I I don't I know I know it's a little bit like blasphemy to say, and and people out there will crucify me, but I I never liked the tongue on the Copa Mundials. It was it was too much of a hassle to just get it to stay down, which is also one of the reasons. Like another one of the reasons I preferred the Morelius 
because it you know you just it stayed down. It, yeah, it the stayed pre-flop down better, yeah. tongue was a big deal. I agree with you. I like whenever I wore copas, I just had them tongue up, kind of against the front of my shin. Yeah, I just could, I couldn't be bothered to go through the hassle. Uh, like no, if you've ever seen you somebody that has like is like a true copa guy, no. they have like clothes pins in their bag. So ever, as soon as they take them off, they're clothes pinning the tongue down. And it takes like six months to get it Just to where it stays down on its own. Man. It's so easy. I know. It's too much <laughs> but, work. But- you know, uh, fair, fair play to Adidas on these. I think they're uh, they're really cool. It's a nice way of experiencing what what a what a like a cop on a modern tooling actually feels like. It feels a lot better than the OG tooling, um, and they they they're pretty light now. They actually weigh roughly what the Morelia weighed in uh, 1985. <laughs> um, <so laughs> wow, that was unnecessary. That was unnecessary, Jay. Why did I? But anyway, you know, um, nice pack here. I actually reckon it looks uh, looks pretty good. Eternal class. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, very cool. Two really good releases to round out the year. Absolutely. Any notes, any more notes on eternal class, Copas, absolutes? I don't, I don't think so. I think we, I think we covered just about everything there, but we can get to some questions, which if you do have any questions that you'd like us to potentially answer on a future episode of the Boot Nerds podcast, please leave it down below in the comment section. That would be greatly appreciated. Exactly. Also, uh, before we uh, go into uh, the questions, a word from our sponsor, Josh. Oh, yes. This episode is brought to you by PureGripSocks.com. Your one-stop shop for grip socks at the most affordable prices, basically anywhere. $14.99 a pair, available in a wide variety of colors. And also Pure Sleeves. Stop cutting your football socks. Get Pure Sleeves, tons of colors, $9.99 a pair. It's the complete setup. Super affordable. Changes your life. Puregripsocks.com. Link yeah, in the okay, questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. You should get like the, um, you should get like a, a, a speaker voiceover job. You have that really, you can get into a very like American commercial kind of gem when you get it uh, on a roll. That was cool. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. Anyways, a uh, question here from Federico Cavallaro. Cavallara? Cavallara. Boot Nerds fans since day one. Just love your content. Italian y'all for y'all right here. Appreciate it, my man. Sorry I butchered <laughs> your last name. Uh, my question is, for the same price, which Mizuno made in Japan boots would you take? Morelia Neo 3 Betas, Wave Cup Legends, Morelia Zero, or Morelia 2s? Oh, jeez. Yeah, but that's like, that's like... Okay, well, look, I can tell you right away I'm not picking Neos. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really like Neos. I'm not picking Neos. I'm just not. I'm sorry. Are you just being like, are you just trying to just go against I'm the I'm not stream trying to just... trigger you. I knew it would trigger you slightly, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's always more, f- I feel like the Boot Nerds podcast always ends up being a little bit more exciting when you're slightly triggered. <laughs> like it's, it's a shame that we haven't brought up the Phantom Vision caller in like 10 I was just going to say, you just wave that around. That triggers me. <laughs> I should, we should, you should have that on hand and I should just have like a, a card with Neymar's face that I can just uh, wave around and just like have pure rage going into the camera. Oh man. <laughs> Anyways, um, I I really like Morelia Zero. To me, that's like a, a phenomenal football boot. But would you play but, in it? Like you, you're playing. Oh yeah, totally. I wouldn't feel bad about playing in those. But I think uh, I would pick Wave Cup Legend. Yeah. I just agree. because I think that it's it gives me everything that I like about the Morelia Zero, but with a better, more aggressive outsole. Yes. So, so I would Wave Cup probably Legend would also- be it. I would probably also like I I think um it, it's no secret that I think the the Morelli Neo 3 Betas is the best new boot of 2020. Uh but for nostalgia reasons I'd probably also pick the Wave Cup Legends cuz they just have that uh you know the, the special they give you a little bit of that heritage um <sighs> class and elegance. The, yeah. the outsole, the tooling is still brilliant in 2020 but you know from a performance point of view Neos, Neos. It's just like <laughs> for me, Neos. The Neo is the full package. That's true. Like, yeah, if that you really is want. Probably if you're into the like most modern. complete boot. Yeah, it's just the most complete boot on the market right now. It gives you everything. Yeah. It's light. What I, it's comfortable. The touch is 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 close, but it's also elegant. Uh, okay, it's really, really, really expensive, but you can buy the elites, and they're also very. It's just it, there's just a bit of everything, except for uh for a very aggressive tooling, but you can't you can't have it all. Sure. Most I, to them. me, I'm just so impressed by Wave Cup Legend, especially mm. the remakes. They're they're pretty much one to one with the original. Oh yeah. For, uh, as old as that boot is, it does not feel dated in almost any way. Absolutely not. No. That's what's crazy about it. It's yeah. it, it really is one of those football boots that I think will be timeless. 
unless football boots just take this crazy turn that we don't know about yet. But I mean, it, they kind of have already, uh, but <laughs> uh, compared to at least 18 years ago, but that's the thing, it's 18 years old and, and you and I are still talking about choosing that over their latest and greatest, right? Yeah. It, it, it says something about how good that boot is. But but if I'm honest, if it was my money I, and I really wanted something to like, just, just get the best out there, probably the Neos, because they're just so, they're so well balanced. That's fair. That's yeah. very fair. Um, what the, is that name? <laughs> that boy Goopik? Whatever. If you could take the tech from different boots and make a Frankenstein boot, what would you do? For instance, uh, Mercs with Fusion Fit and Demon Skin, what would yours be? Oh man. Okay, let's, let's stick to, let's, I, I'm gonna, this is a question that I need to think about a long time to give you like a true Frankenstein boot, but I can think off the top of my head, a couple just soul plate upper combos that I think would be mm, sick. Mm, mm. I would love a mercurial vapor upper with the new speed frame from the X ghosted. Okay. That would be excellent. Yes. I think that'd be cool. Excellent. Excellent. Unintended. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'll, I'll get my code. Um, <laughs> carry on. <laughs> um, I mean, we did get, the, the, the recent F50 remake was a pretty cool mashup of just kind of old and new together that worked surprisingly well. I would probably uh -huh. update the heel liner and general heel area on an sure. OG F50 sure. to something a little newer. Yeah. Um, man. Uh, okay, here's one. Here's one. Um, the very obvious thing for me would be to go um, Zuna Morelia Neo 3 Beta Japans with the X Ghosted tooling on. That yeah, would be that like, would be that cool. would be bliss. Yeah, no, no secret that we're both really big fans of the X Ghosted tooling. They did an excellent job there. You could you could Before put that, that soul plate on pretty much any football boot right yeah. now, and I think it would be better. Imagine, oh, imagine that, imagine that on the on the Copa Twenty Plus. Just just to like just to like completely throw out the rule book. That would be pretty interesting. Uh, but the sweet. funny thing is that before the X-Ghosted tooling, or before the X-Ghosted came out, we would we would probably have said uh, Morelia Neo uh, 3 upper with the Merc Soul Plate. Okay, what about this one? Joma Champion Max upper, no. Superfly 5 Soul Plate. Yes. That would be sick. Uh, that would be the same as saying Superfly 5 upper in the Joma Champion Max Soul Plate, right? It would, but the, well, the Joma Champion Max Soul Plate is technically an Adidas design, so. Oh yeah, that's the X16, right? Yes, so oh, the, there's, the, there's so really they've not they've actually much. made the Frankenstein boot. They're one step that ahead is, of us. That is, that's basically been, it's really unfortunate because I've slowed down on the on the Joma memery on my channel for the most part, right? And I do get yeah. occasional people saying, oh, you know what? They're not so bad. Their indoor line is really good, which it is. Sure. But it's, it's a shame nice. that like when I first started doing this almost 10 years ago now, Joma had some legit football boots, like total fit with the one piece leather uppers, solid boots, like really, really good. Uh, once upon a time, they were making some really cool original stuff. I'm not sure why the philosophy changed to basically these copycat things, but I guess it is what it is, unfortunately. Uh, I would love a Hyper about, Venom Phantom 1 upper uh -huh. on like a Superfly 4 carbon fiber sole plate would be yeah, sick. That, I was going to say Hyper Venom Phantom 1, but what about Hyper Venom Phantom 1 upper on the regular cup tooling? Okay, that would be cool too. That would, that would be, be pretty sweet. awesome, right? Yeah, that's also a really good sole plate. Now there's, there's a lot of interesting mishmashes, mashups, sorry, that you could do. I'm just ooh, noticing ooh, that me, there's me, a boot me, missing me, on the me. wall behind me. Uh, 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 King Platinums on X Ghosted. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Sick too. Nice. Okay. Uh, lots of Frankenstein nice. boots. Um, there's also one from Riley Evans. Hey, Jay, do you know when Adidas will release the Ghosted Plus Precision to Blur in the United States? If not, would you be willing to ask for is for us sad folks over here waiting for them. And uh, it appears that, you know, there you can probably explain better what's what's been going on in the US in terms of precision to blurs. X's. Yeah, it, for whatever reason, all the US retailers have had a hard time getting X ghosted boots in general at the top uh -huh. end models, point one and plus. Okay. Um, precision to blur, most of them, I, I know that they ordered them, they, they would like to sell them to you, but unfortunately they just aren't getting their inventory. 
Um, okay. it, it seems to have been Europe only, where J. Mike, I think you know a little bit more about if, that. If only there was a retailer that had inventory uh, who who's shipping to the U.S. Would the you happen to know such prices, a to be honest? Uh, reasonable prices. Would you happen to know such a retailer? They call them the friendly neighborhood boop nerds, by the way. Boop pushers, whatever it is. I usually call them. It's unisportstore.com, oh. guys. It's not a secret. <laughs> Shameless plug. But we have inventory. Uh, we shipped for, you know, in these COVID times, very reasonable uh, uh, fees to the US uh, as, as cheap as we can. And uh, we, have, yeah, we, we have a lot come by. It's just, come, come. Happy times, yeah, but I, you know, just about uh, everything. I would like to um, to pass on the the word from from, as you say, you sad folk in the U.S. waiting for the boots. Um, I don't have any sway. I can't like call up Addy and say, "Yo, guys, uh, think of the, the the poor sots over in in the states. Make them some boots, please, and and it'll magically happen." Um, I, it, they don't they don't give a. Well, like, can I'm just can a I guy, also just I just want to point something else that Unisport sells that I yes. thought was fascinating. Yes. For, for anybody that has been following either me or Jay on Instagram, you probably saw his recent fashion. Oh, you didn't. The statement that he made, incredible. And the pants to me are really the, that's the part of that outfit that's just mind blowing. And I was very <laughs> surprised to learn that this is a real product that you can actually it's buy. Real product you can at Unisport. Buy, yeah. I was been very close to buying them several times already. I just haven't done it yet. Okay. Um, but Don't- I- I mean, <laughs> I kind of just, you know, how like I've got jerseys hanging up on my wall and stuff like that, but I feel like that pair of pants, like there's never going to be a pair of pants that legendary. They, they even made the hat. They made the bucket hat. Yeah. I love it. I also oh, love man. the fact that the players are never going to wear them Absolutely. because it's just yep. too embarrassing. Absolutely amazing. They made just the shorts too. I was uh, like, my mind was blown when I found out about those pants. It was, it was <laughs> perfection. You know, they fit the, 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 the Terex, a poly Terex boost shoes as well with the, the zebra. Pad. It was, it was, it was perfect. It's, yeah. Um, I've, it's, I don't know why I've thought about this so much over the last week, but I, I've been trying to figure out a situation where a pair of pants like that would be reasonable. And even on Halloween, I think they're like a little bit too bold. Yeah. Like it just, they don't make sense for any no, occasion, which is no why I love that they exist. Yeah. And, and, you know, I thought about, you know, I got some comments there saying that I pulled it off, uh, but you guys are too kind. I definitely didn't pull it off. <laughs> I, I look, I look very, very silly, but uh, yeah, uh, as you said, unisportstore.com, we have plenty of in- inventory of all the cool stuff. X ghost uh Man United, Zebra Pants, you name it, we have it. Just before we move on, quick idea for for the Unisport channel. I'll take 10%, of course. Um, You should totally just go walk around Copenhagen in that outfit and just record people's reactions. Okay, if you like, if you if we flip that and you pay ten percent of the bailout money, I have to pay to, to get out. <laughs> then then we then then we're talking. Then we're talking. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's a question here video. from uh, from Aiden Su Aiden Sach, or however you say that last name. Um, am I tripping or is this spelled Hung Min or? Did they spell Hung Min Song wrong? And and yeah, we did. That's kind of the whole idea that when I sit sit there and edit the podcast, I always go in, I take uh I take a, a real footballer name, I completely butcher it, switch around the, the the first letters in the first and last names, and I give it to Josh. Uh why? Because it's it's fun. It is, it's uh-huh. hilarious. We, it's, we it's laughed really, a lot it's, about that. It's arguably the the best reason to click on the new episode of the Boot Nerd yes. Podcast. Which which name did I dig up today? <laughs> I'll be honest. Every time. I'll be honest, there have been a few occasions where I've been sat in my chair, you know, editing the video, laughing to myself about how much of a genius <laughs> I am when it comes to like flipping names around. So so that's how it goes. Um okay, Josh, one more question from uh, our guy Alejandro. Um, who's been an avid listener, a viewer of the Boot Noise podcast. We appreciate that, guys. Uh, for James Rodriguez, spelled the, the wrong way, obviously, how did you come up with the name SR for you? Uh, were there more options? What do you think of Josh Talks <sighs> Boots or Canadian Sport and Fit and Feel? Oh, man. That's- I love the Canadian Sport. Is that a, is that a, like, a, a, a war play on Unisport? I, 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 I guess, I don't know. Look, I'll be honest. Like the, when, when I started sr for you, I was in my last year of high school mm-hmm. and it was kind of something that I was just going to do as a hobby. 
And like who makes good decisions at, at like 18 years old to like, oh yeah, I'm going to name this, not really realizing that this would be something that would become such a big part of my life. So, you, you know, what would have been wise is to, when I started a YouTube channel, to actually start a YouTube channel that was called Soccer Reviews for You, but I didn't even do that. So that, that eventually got switched over, but... Look, hindsight is twenty twenty when it comes to the what? very beginnings of SR for you. That what was did just you call it initially. Was it Vujo Josh? That was yeah. That was my. That was the name. That technically still is, I think, the name of the channel. But uh, yeah, there, the, it's just something. Honestly, I started. It was a name that was available. The website was available because I originally did not want to ever show my face on the internet. I was just going to write stuff and then do like these short unboxing videos of just me holding shoes and you never see my face or anything like that. Yep. Yep. But, uh, I mean, Hey, it, it's, I'm glad it turned into what it turned into, but that was not the initial plan. So are we, uh, what would you call it now? Oh, that's a great question. See, I feel like at this point, I'll be honest. I feel like there's the word soccer triggers a lot of people and I, I don't, I, I really don't understand it. I, That's because it doesn't make any sense to me because it's it's wrong. It's I know, football. I know it's I know it's technically wrong, but in in a, in a good chunk of the world, it's right, and I know, uh, it I just seemed log it seemed like the logical thing to do at the time. So I think if there was anything that would be different, I'm not sure that I would call it soccer, soccer reviews. reviews for you. Yeah. But yeah. then if you have an ac acronym that has like fu in it, now I'm thinking that's probably not great branding either. So I who knows who knows. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's the yeah. I think uh, I think what you've come up with for uh, the Pure Grip socks is a uh, is a like from a branding perspective is a little, it's a little bit, bit better. better. It's yeah. a little bit better. Uh, you know, Pretty you good. know the channel, the laces, the laces is a little bit of a train wreck. But but that's that's the it SR is what it is. for you laces. When you break it down, soccer reviews for you laces. I mean, what? Yeah, what, what, they, it, I understand uh, why, but Pure is a yeah, slightly better. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Uh, but there you go, Alejandro, no uh, Canadian sport for Josh's channel, uh, this time around at least. Um, but I'm sure that if you end up, Josh, uh, changing your name, Alejandro will take his uh, Can token 10%. Canadian guy talks about football boots. Yeah. C G T A F. That's too long. Yes. It's yeah. too long. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. It All things considered, SR for you, I feel is pretty easy. Yeah, it's to pretty. It's pretty good. <laughs> With the alternatives we have in mind, uh, let's uh, yeah, let's let's put it down there. Which also is the case for episode 94 of the Boot Nerds podcast. We have talked about Predator Absolutes. We have talked about uh, Copa Mundial remakes. Uh, we've answered some questions. It's been a good time. This is also the last podcast in 2020. So uh, again, like we said at the end of 2019. Thank you so much for all the support this year. It's been absolutely amazing. I'm I'm sure that that Josh really uh, appreciates the support on uh, Pure Grip Socks. I really appreciate the support on the drip, the memory lane boots, the Unisport boots, uh, the shirts we've done. It's it's been really really nice. Um, hopefully, you're also going to tune in in 2021. There's going to be plenty of stuff to talk about. We're going to be back with the Boot Nerds podcast there. So uh, so thanks a lot, guys. Thank you for the support and uh, see you in the new year. I've been J Mike and I approve this message as per usual. Thank you so much. See you later. See you later guys.